Well, hello. It's nice to see you again. Feels like it's uh, been a while, huh? Our past few casts have been focused on some amazing guests. How lucky has the fortress been, right? Amazing, amazing people have been visiting us. But I have to say, it's very nice to sit with you again for a few minutes and, you know, just catch up, just have a chat. Oh, and by the way, it's that time again. If you can find a way to share the show, rate the show, review the show, I would be really grateful. Your engagement helps keep Time to Talk ad-free. Podcasting, unfortunately, isn't cheap, but I'd really like to resist adding commercials to the show. So anything you can do on Apple, Spotify, iHeart, any of the other platforms to rate, review, and share the show, it helps me with that goal. Even just posting the show on your pages with a link is a bigger help than you can know. So go on, hop to it while you listen. Isn't it exciting that our efforts to defend pop culture are paying dividends? We've got to keep pop culture alive. And we've been so spoiled. Ariana's new album, oh wow, by the way, We Can't Be Friends, the second single, what a brilliant second single. Miley, releasing brilliant singles as well. How fun is Doctor? Classic Pharrell. Dua Lipa, she has a new album on the way. Don't know about that album cover. Bruno Mars, my absolute favourite. He's the laziest man in pop. Well, he's on track for a new album this year. And of course, we know that Kylie's in the studio, right? And she is seriously excited about whatever it is that she's got in the can. If you know Kylie like I do, and I know you do, it's written all over her face. There's something very special heading our way. She's already itching for us to hear it. Mariah Carey. A lot of you don't care about her, but I think she's pretty awesome. Mariah Carey. She is not far off. New work as well. So, you know what? Let's keep working, you and me. The age of pop culture won't die if we keep paying attention. And you know you can trust me, so let's level with each other. You have your favourites. And you don't readily expand your mind very often, right? Well, please, push yourself just a little bit and go and listen to the Pet Shop Boys' new single. Listen to some of oh, Ariana's new album. Listen to something that you wouldn't normally listen to. And listen to it more than once so that you don't do that whole, ah, didn't like it, didn't like it. Actually, it takes a few listens. You know that as well as I do. Broaden your horizons. For the sake of pop culture. So you know these celebrities that we enjoy feeding through the fence? We love them, right? But they're not perfect, and they need your help. Over the past few months, some of them have succumbed to that disease that I thought was actually abating. Celeb hypocrisitis. It's on the rise, and we need to be vigilant. And you, yes... You really need to stop accidentally feeding this disease by hitting the like button and encouraging them. One of our favourites, Pink, she just got the social media standing ovation of her career for blaming absolutely everybody except for herself for Madonna bullying. Listen, a celebrity with a cause, a political view or an opinion, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing when it's real, but when they open their perfectly manicured lips to tell us BS that they don't believe or that they don't practice, it needs to be called out. And you, yes, you, <laughs> you need to stop hitting the like button when they talk nonsense. Megan telling us we need to save the planet whilst leaving a personal carbon footprint a thousand times larger than you or I. Ben Affleck calling out Harvey Weinstein so earnestly, with such a look of seriousness on his face, but only after the abuse becomes public. He knew about it for years. Paris Hilton telling us to vote or die, whilst not even being registered to vote herself. Friend of the show, Ellen, 
telling us that COVID was like a prison sentence while she was sitting in a 15-room mansion. 15 rooms, friends. 15 rooms. And of course, Madonna, claiming to be a victim of systemic ageist disadvantage, whilst being one of the most privileged and free people on planet Earth. Maybe Madonna should visit a public aged care facility and inspect the food being served to the residents. Wake up, Madonna, and fuck your out-of-touch definition of ageism, which mocks the real disadvantage that we all need to be focused on and addressing. Now, please don't get me wrong. I celebrate the lifestyle of the rich and famous. I have no ill will that they have privilege. In fact, I live through their privilege vicariously. I don't even care if they become out of touch. Because who am I to say that you wouldn't become out of touch if you stepped out of your underwear and some poor sod comes along and picks it up on your behalf? Over time, that sort of lifestyle, that kind of privilege, is going to affect your worldview. It's going to affect your sense of self-importance. A celebrity is inevitably going to see the world differently from you and I. And that's okay. But there are lines that celebrities shouldn't cross. And they're pretty basic. Never preach something that you don't practice. Never adopt a cause that you don't really care about or that you don't understand. And never, ever claim victimhood. Have you noticed? It's the new accessory in the world of celebrity. It seems you, you just can't be famous without being the victim of something. Most of them claim to be the victims of haters. And we ordinary folk. We're lapping it up, my friends, and we shouldn't be. Oh, poor Taylor, she's such a victim. The haters are out to get her. Well, actually, I've never met a hater. Having you're a fat heifer left as a comment under one of your posts doesn't make you a victim. Taylor, go and visit a Burns unit. And if you're a listener to the show, you know I love Taylor. I think she represents so much good But she really does encourage her fans, mainly teenage girls, to be powerless. Her message is often that anything that goes wrong in your life can be attributed to someone else, someone over there, someone up there, someone you've never met, somebody you have met, some someone in power, someone who's out to get you, the boogeyman. Well, I'm looking forward to Taylor writing a new number one hit. And she should just call it My Responsibility. Okay, rant over. Now, if you want to hear a song that could fall into the Kylie basket of songs that already contains Paper Dolls, Ocean Blue, uh, Cool, go and listen to Imperfect For You by Ariana. And tell me what you think. I really do want to hear what you think about that song. Could Kylie pull that one off? I reckon so. The Ariana album, um, I think it's called Sunshine, the new Ariana album that was released a couple of weeks ago. It's excellent. There's this run of tracks. There's quite a few tracks on this album. More than average, I'm sure of it. It's a, you know, finally a meaty album that doesn't end at 47 minutes. Um, There's this run of tracks later in the album. Let's call it the B-side. It's so satisfying. It starts with The Boy Is Mine. Nothing to do with the Michael Jackson track, The Girl Is Mine. The Boy Is Mine, Yes, and We Can't Be Friends, which is the second single. Amazing. Go and check out the acoustic version. I Wish I Hated You, which is oh, just such a beautiful song. It's it's beautiful. And then Imperfect For You, which I mentioned, I believe, could be a Kylie track. I keep finding myself skipping to that section of the album that starts with The Boy Is Mine. Thank you, Ariana. Thank you. You're such a reliable pop gem. Okay, are you ready? We're about to remind ourselves of who the Pet Shop Boys are. They're about to release a new album. And it's just wall-to-wall discussion about celebrities today. So take my hand. Tell me what you are feeling. Understand, this is just the beginning. Let's go into the fortress together. Coming to you from the mountain fortress of pop culture.
You're listening to Time to Talk. Hello, everyone. This is your daily dose of internet. <laughs> Mr. Peter, hello. Hello. Mr. How are you doing? You've been working oh, hard? Really well. I'm really well. I've just finished work for the day, so I'm happy. <laughs> you and I have to work, right? We, we do. Work. We do. So, no, I'm very happy to join in on this chat. Join, yeah. uh, let's have a little bit of a rant. <laughs> yeah, there's a, the complete disconnect, isn't there, between celebrities and the average working person. This is not resentment. It's just an observation from me that maybe you share, maybe you don't. I but do celeb- share it. I mean, not all celebrities. There are, you know, there are really nice down-to-earth celebrities and, of course, celebrities who've come from, you know, worked their way up and can remember when they were normal people and um, retain that. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot that just, they're just off on another planet. They seem hypocritical and and just out of, as you say, out of touch. Um I think we've had a few of them in Australia recently, actually. I'm telling you, I've got a run of it here. Pink, Madonna, Oprah, Billie Eilish, Kaylee Cura from The Big Bang Theory. Uh, the list goes the on list and on. Goes on. At, at the risk of drawing the ire of Swifties, I'm going to say Taylor Swift as well. Well, we'll add her to the li- Oh, well, yes. <laughs> but, you know, so that's what we're here to talk about. But can I tell you something first? I, I did something silly. I usually have some sort of hot beverage with me when I when I'm podcasting, so I ran upstairs. I've got the kettle on and the teapot ready, and all the little, you know, I have a very regimented way of of doing things. But I made a mistake this time, my friend. Made a mistake. What, what did you do? I put well. I've went and bought a large ice cube tray because I've decided I'm sick of the smaller ice cubes. I want big, hefty ice cubes. That's what we need in Australia: big, hefty yeah. ice cube, yeah. right? So I put one of those in my tea because I'd made it too late and I thought I would need it to be a bit cooler by the time I talk to you. And so I put it in there and now it's stone cold. It's just melted into the tea. Now I'm drinking an iced tea, which is not what I wanted. You know what? We're we're hot beverage buddies because I had a hot coffee and I just had a sip and it's gone cold as well. So, What type of coffee do you enjoy? This is just a plunger coffee, like a French purse or plunger. No, not just a plunger coffee. Anything you put love and effort into and care. Well, yeah, true. I think it's wonderful. You didn't use a coffee bag, did you? No. Yeah, you, you <laughs> scooped, you plunged, you boiled. There was effort in that drink. So well, there know. is, uh, you know. When, when How come it's cold, though? Did you put an ice cube in it? Too? <laughs> no, I just left it too long. I drank half and then I sort of got waylaid with something else. And now it's cold. It's cold where I am today, too. Well, I wasn't sure if it was just my mood. I had to keep it in check. But it's been the past three weeks. I've been noticing more and more of these instances coming up in the world of celebrity. Hopefully everyone knows that this is all done with me loving and defending the world of celebrity, but you've got to call a spade a spade. So I think the problem is that it's become trendy in the world of celebrity to claim the mantle of victim. I really do. I think it's coming into fashion. Back in the 90s, it was trendy to attach yourself to a charity cause or maybe adopt an impoverished child. That was all the rage back then. And and I've got to say, it's all very admirable. I'm not putting it down. Until you start to trade it as a celebrity currency, then that's not okay. And that's yep. what started to happen back in the 90s. My belief is that it, the direction we're heading in, the, the world of celebrity is becoming even more sick because now the must-have accessory, if you will, for any celebrity seems to be to claim some form of disadvantage. Now, yep. that could be a Just rare example, disease. Yeah. could be a rare disease. It could be a bad childhood Uh, An abusive partner is a popular one. Yep, yep. Uh, And then they take it a step further to say that being a victim excuses you of all your personal accountability. And, of course, celebrity is influential, so that trickles down to our world and our youth, especially the most impressionable in society who start to believe all this stuff. And I truly believe it's a sick virus currently in our celebrity world. Okay, that's a, that's an interesting proposition. Look, I think, I think actually you're right, and you see these people like these impressionable people sort of sticking up for them and sort of taking sides and becoming sort of victims by proxy almost. Like, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Well, when was the last time you heard a celebrity say, "Oh, look, I could have done that better," or "I made a mistake when I said that," or even <laughs> even just boldly, "I am accountable." Yeah, I'm yeah. accountable. No, never. 
All right? Never. Okay. There's a, there's a there's an old doctrine of it's called clean hands, and it's based on the maximum of it's equity. Actually, it's all about what we're all striving for. That one who comes into equity must come with clean hands. So, in other words, don't complain about being the victim of something that you have actually engaged in or perpetrated yourself. Yeah, yeah, no, for mm. sure. I mean, that's and that's just common sense. I mean, I, but yeah, you're right. It somehow seems to just bypass, or celebrities seem to bypass that that maxim. They do, they do. Like, nice if you want to stand up there on the mountain, crying out all the things that are wrong in the world. Cool, go for it. I love it. But don't be a Lizzo and start slamming everyone from woe to go and then fire your own dancers for being overweight themselves. You know, it's not, <laughs> yeah. cool. it's not okay. Yeah. Now, that is definitely, you know, a case of the pot and the black kettle, isn't it? I mean, come on. <laughs> terrible, terrible thing. Like, fine. And in the average world, we don't get away with it, as you know, Peter. We work in workforces where we'll be called out pretty quickly if we yep. start to demonstrate hypocrisy. We'll be called out. So today we're going to be maybe calling out a few examples of hypocrisy. Okay. So what have you noticed about Taylor? Well, Taylor, look, for me, it's the private jet thing. I'm sorry. Look, it's just everyone knows how bad air travel is for the environment. So why not just go first class? I mean, there's there's endless flights between Australia and the US and all over the place. I mean, there's absolutely no reason not to go commercial and fly business or first class. Um, I mean, no pop star travels more than Kylie Minogue, right? She lives in Melbourne. Her career is based in the UK, basically. She's working a lot in America. So she's always on planes. Like we saw her arrive into Sydney, Sydney Airport on Tuesday. Um, if she doesn't need her own private jet, why the hell does Taylor Swift? Um, of course, I, I know Taylor's bigger than Kylie, uh, you know, on a stardom level. But even the likes of Madonna and Michael Jackson, who were absolute superstars, at, you know, at the highest level in their heydays, didn't own private jets. Um, although Michael Jackson did hire them on occasion further in, into his career. But, I mean... Taylor just everywhere she goes, it's a private jet, and it's just such a bad example. Don't tell me about saving the planet and then step onto a private aircraft. Be a good old-fashioned celebrity. Be fucking brash. Get on that private jet. Jet. Get on it. Yeah. Knowing that you're an Own environmental it. vandal, be proud of being an environmental <laughs> vandal. Be a diva, but don't gesture at me from the tarmac to recycle my goddamn coffee cup at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. I, um, I love Taylor Swift for getting on private jets. Frankly, I mean, good honor. Go for yeah, it. I mean, look, it'd be fun. Wouldn't it be fabulous? But flying everywhere by private jet. But I mean, you know, don't. Uh, yeah, just own it. Be, be, be. I mean, a really good example actually is Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker. Um, probably a better example because they do, um, they're both vegan or near vegan for various reasons, including environmental reasons. Um, you know, they recently traveled all around Australia for Blink 182's concert tour and they checked into every vegan restaurant in the country. I mean, Funky Pies in Sydney, Smith and Deli in Melbourne, Dickies in Brisbane, but everywhere they went, it was private jet. So that is hypocrisy. <laughs> I mean, Bloody kale munches. Exactly. And um, at least Taylor doesn't sort of, she's, uh, you know, as far as I know, I don't think she's a kale muncher, but, but Courtney and Travis are, and they, and, and, you know, they run record as, as promoting veganism and, and for, you know, for among other reasons, it's environmental, it's lower environmental impact. So, I mean, come on, that's, that's just absolutely taking the mickey. Pink, who I love. Yeah, She's yeah. me over the edge, okay? Because there's this TikTok video going around at the moment. It's getting so many likes and thumbs up and good on you, Pink, for saying the truth. Because oh, yeah, there like she is. She's asked in this example by the journalist about Madonna's appearance. And she almost stops cold. She glares. And, well, actually, do you want to hear it, Peter? Yeah, let's listen. And you're asking me what I think about Madonna's face. That is not progress. Yeah. yeah. We shouldn't be talking about Madonna's face. We should be talking about all the badass shit that woman did for the rest of us to come along after her. That's not progress. Right. That's so, not progress. That's clickbait. I love her point. Yeah. That's clickbait. That's not progress. Why are we focusing on people's appearance? That's lovely, right? It is okay. Yep, yep. But a great example of a celebrity making a reasonable point. But actually just pointing the finger to everyone else, she's blaming the media, she's blaming this fictitious beast of society. Why do we, we is the word she uses instead of society. Yeah, Why do yeah. we ask about Madonna's face? But 
instantly someone like me who watches a lot of celebrity culture mm-hmm. goes rewind in my head actually weren't you the one who yeah. was stirring up some shit with madonna just, not that long ago you know, like that that what, what was that you i don't remember the, the details what, what what exactly happened there well it was on howard stern and okay. completely completely and utterly unsolicited as howard was not digging into it i think he just asks an innocuous question about madonna and instantly pink sows the seeds of why there's a feud and funnily enough peter i've got that to listen to too madonna doesn't like me i don't know why why people, well, why wouldn't she know, like some you? people just don't like me she tried to kind of play me on on regis and kelly and i didn't i'm not you know i'm not the one so it didn't work out <laughs> just such a silly story because i actually i i love madonna and and right. I love her no matter what. Like I, I still love her. I love her no matter what. Right. She was such an inspiration to me. But it sort of got twisted around that I was like fangirling and and was dying to meet Madonna when I, in actuality she invited me into her dressing room. And so I just said a joke when Regis brought me out. He's like, "How does it feel to meet you? Like, I mean, I heard you're just falling over yourself backstage. How does it feel?" I'm like, "I thought she wanted to meet me." <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. Out. Oh, and that didn't work oh, out for us. So don't get me wrong, Pink has every right to tell that story, right? Yeah, every right. But it's still gossip. And then not long later, in the first clip we heard, she's pointing the finger at everyone else. Oh, don't don't gossip. Don't talk about things that aren't nice and kind. Yeah, yeah. she was doing it herself. Like, So if she'd started that story by saying, uh, by if she'd started the, the one about her face saying, listen, I'm guilty of this too, but we yeah. should and then included herself in it. But they, celebrities have this habit of always putting themselves above the pack. It's all you people who are doing the problem and making the problem, causing the problem. And actually, you were part of the problem in this example. Pete. That's a really good point, Tim. Like she, yeah, basically she's saying don't, in the first one, don't pit women against women. And in the second one, she's doing exactly that and saying- and we all- it's human nature. These celebrities ask us to strive to be things we're not. We're human beings. We're actually meant to judge. It's part of the human species. It's what we do to survive. And and this whole new movement of don't judge others. Like, I believe in being as kind as you possibly can. Yep. Don't try to cancel me or pin me up against a crucifix when I make a mistake just because I'm human and actually say something true about someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever I listen to Tim and his panel of guests, my toes begin to curl. And I feel just the right amount of tingling all over my aching body. Now, let's get back to the show. (laughs) What are your thoughts about this? Let's move on from the hypocrisy of it. But let's, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about the issue that Pink raised, which is about don't comment on the appearance of celebrities because celebrities spend so much time and money cultivating their appearance that's and right, forcing yeah. us to look at it like they rub our faces in it on the red carpet so that they want us to be interested in their image yet and they want us to comment on it if it's positive well, but they don't right. yeah, yeah. It if we look, don't think my, it's positive what's what's that maybe, about it's yeah my opinion is they, just, they just have no right to say that i mean so, celebrities especially pop stars i mean it's all about image that's what that's their you know that's one of the most important things about their job so you can't make it all about image and you know pay attention to every detail and try to project various images and then go no you can't comment on this unless it's positive i mean sorry tough luck that if you're that sensitive don't you're in the wrong trade i mean it's just you know. amazing unless and 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 it's the fans who've jumped on board and are supporting this now if you they make a do, comment that's do. not favorable all of a sudden you're body shaming, you're woman shaming, you're this shaming. Well, actually, they walked down the carpet wanting me to make a comment, and I didn't think it was great, so the comment's slightly negative. Sorry, can't have it both ways. I'm not always going to be kind about your image. This is why I loved Joan Rivers, the late Joan Rivers. I mean, on that show, Fashion Police, she would totally, um, you know, totally and and fairly comment on on anyone on the red carpet she'd say what she thought and a lot of people loved it but also a lot of celebrities complained and hated her for it and i just thought she was great i mean come on you can't be earning 20 million dollars a movie or whatever and then go oh they said something mean about my frock on the red carpet i mean it's just um yeah it's ridiculous so no i'm totally with you on this tim the world of celebrity is all predicated on image well, I'm damn well going to make my comments about the image clear. And most of the time, it's very favourable. Miley Cyrus got a new video out at the moment. She looks 
unfucking amazing. believable. She looks amazing. But sorry, I will also tell you, Miley, the time that you come out on the red carpet and look like the villain out of Ghostbusters, which we did <laughs> recently, you know, I'm going to say it. And yeah, yeah. that's because you're inviting me to. If I said it without the invitation, uh, I could sort of maybe see the argument that I should be slapped down for that. But they are inviting us to look at them. They're inviting yeah, us to make money. Right. Attention is their currency. So, I mean, sorry, you can't just have positive attention. You've got to take the good with the bad. And that's that's the game. That's the celebrity game. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's weird, this new thing. But you're right. It's the fans as well who really get – it's almost like the – because I think celebrity fandom has kind of replaced religion in the Western world. So <laughs> and yeah. people act in the same way. They, they're so, you know, how dare you blaspheme my my god or goddess. That's how they're acting. Exactly. I first really noticed it with Michael Jackson. I think his fans mm -hmm. were especially um, defensive. Um, well, that's because the man himself <laughs> took no accountability. There was this yep. interview, which I'm sure you're aware of, with Barbara Walters, where it's just clear as yes. day where he stands. And that's fine. I respect where he stands. But it essentially was, don't ever write anything mean. Only say kind things. Don't try to report the truth. Only say nice things about me and my family and my work. Yep. Crazy. Crazy. That's right. And his fans adopted that. His fans, very, and even now they're still like that. Um, even all the after all these years that he's popped his clogs, they're still like that. Um, uh, and I mean, look, this is a whole other can of worms, isn't it? But the allegations, if you even, you know, and look, let's not even go there. <laughs> well, there is a great podcast you can listen to everyone about the allegations on this. Very, there is online. Yeah. Um, generally fair, I think too. Um, some people who've had fame from a young age. I can almost understand that if you've had people like the royal family or Michael Jackson, if you've had everyone in the world falling over themselves, like when I walk into a, into a shop or something, they might not even notice that they've, you've exchanged the money and you've walked out of a shop. They won't remember you. When you're a celebrity, everyone, right? So if you've had that from a young age, I sort of get that you might develop this uh, privileged exterior and this shell. And there's an excuse there, in my opinion, for why yeah. you might – see the world in a very uh, skewed way but james corden and billy eilish both came to it later in life they both come from humble beginnings so sometimes i challenge myself if i all of a sudden overnight had fame i wonder if it's like a virus that you can't escape where you start treating people the way that they're treating you like as if you're very very important and special right yeah, i wonder you'd think though that someone who who was you know, let's call it a normal person before they were famous, would know what it's like and would would be grateful. And, you know, um, yeah, it's really weird, isn't it? That um, brings me to that newest example of Billie Eilish, as I mentioned. She was at the awards show sitting next to Kylie. You might remember this. Yeah. And there's this beautiful velvet rope making sure that the common folk, the TikTokers, couldn't get anywhere near them. And Billie Eilish says to Kylie, they're TikTokers. I don't need this. <laughs> like, seriously? You don't need this? You were virtually there only three or four years ago, whatever, and now you, you don't need this? That's yeah, the well, virus right there. It is the virus. Mm. It's interesting, though, that Kylie hasn't succumbed. I wonder why. Or if she has, she's certainly hidden it very well. I love that um, because that's just as important as working out how does it happen to the people with the virus. How do some yeah. people become immune to it? For me, with Kylie, it always just comes back to those beautiful roots of her family. Like, I don't think when you're surrounded by a family of people where if you started behaving like that, they'd pull you back in quick smart. Yep. I actually spoke to um, the photographer. I'm really sorry, sir, I can't remember your name, who shot Kylie's Enjoy Yourself um, album cover and oh, lots okay. of other photos. Yep, yep. And he's had every one of them, except for Madonna. He, Michael Jackson, any one of the celebrities you care to mention, he photographed them for an album cover or a magazine shoot. Okay. Um, and he was talking about exactly this. And he said, when Kylie and Jason and nearly any Australian came in, they knew that this was a job. Yep. And so they could put on the performance and in front of the camera but they treat it as a job. Then he cited Vanilla Ice. He said Vanilla Ice came in and he truly believed that he was the character of Vanilla Ice and he behaved that way, i.e. poorly, behind the camera. 
like yeah. starting to try and direct the whole thing and I will do this and I won't do that. He said he'd become deluded. So I think that's the difference we're trying to put our finger on here is some celebrities recognise that it's their job. It's a job, yeah. And it's a character almost and it's a part of their personality, whereas others fully become that person. I mean, Joan Crawford even going back in the day, I think she became Joan Crawford, the celebrity, and believed that's who she was. And yeah. there was a lot of troubles for yourself yeah. mental health-wise, I would have thought. Yeah. Actually, I, I, was, I had an interesting experience with Kylie um, sort of indirectly at the New Year's Eve. It was it 2012 New Year's Eve at the Sydney Opera House, which I was lucky enough to, to go to. It was like um, where they launched the fireworks and the Lord. God, she looked good that night. Ever more, yeah. And Kylie was there and so were a, lot, a bunch of B-grade celebrities as well. <laughs> um, but Kylie was the one who was really nice, um, who people, you know, she she there was no, there were no airs and graces, whereas some of the sort of more minor um, celebrities were much more aloof, um, and um, I just thought it really interesting how the, the biggest star in the in the place was the most personable. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, I think Kylie is probably an exception. I don't think you'd get that from every major celebrity. That's for sure. Um, Everyone knows I love Madonna, so brace yourself, everyone. It's not going to be particularly, you know, a positive thing, but I have to call this out because it's been one of those examples that's been getting to me lately. She's been grabbing hold of this ageism thing for the longest time now, honestly, yep. uh, and it really bothers me because all the evidence would suggest this is not somebody who could claim victimhood of ageism. This is the quote, to be fair to her, this is what mm -hmm. she said in a statement after that infamous appearance at an awards show That's where right. she was photographed from very unflattering angles. She wrote, once again, I am caught in the glare of ageism and misogyny that permeates the world we live in, a world that refuses to celebrate women past the age of 45 and feel the need to punish her if she continues to be strong-willed, hardworking and adventurous. Now, that was on the 8th of February, 2023. Yeah. And you just think, wow, you are trying to claim victimhood. She says she's been punished for being Madonna. Well, actually, let's have another look at this, Madonna. You're now in your 60s. You get to travel the world, perform in front of thousands and thousands of people any night you want you're making more than 75 million dollars us for the tour you are currently on you have the opportunity to create music you are one of the most identifiable privileged wealthy and free women on planet earth yeah yet you claim to be the victim A of victim. ageism isn't everything that you have and do the evidence that there is no ageism, there's nothing working against you. You can do whatever the hell you want. And here's the thing for me, Peter, it dilutes the importance of ageism in its truest sense. When I think of ageism, I think of focusing on how we treat our elderly, what we yeah. feed our elderly in public facilities, that every elderly person has access to a registered nurse, mm -hmm. how we prevent elder abuse, or even the right for people beyond the age of 65 years to be engaged in the workplace without being taxed out of out of sight so that, that it's yeah, not yeah. worth the, the get out of bed. Those are issues that relate to ageism. Those, yeah, and they're, they're really important issues. How yeah. dare a celebrity appropriate the issue of ageism just so that they can justify their right to inject filler into their forehead? This is That's so, so cool. unbelievably out of the world, doesn't it? Like, I mean, there are, there's real, yeah, you're right. And the other thing, didn't she add something else about bl she blamed a long lens camera or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which yeah. is just rubbish because obviously her face, I'm sorry, it is full of fillers. And again, she has been about image all her, her entire career has been Would about Would she have complained image. if we all went, oh, my God, doesn't she look great for 65? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Then, then, then it would be okay by Madonna's standards for us to comment on her appearance. But don't comment on my appearance unless it's kind and nice. Yeah, and oh. sorry, Madge, your your whole career's been about your appearance, so you can't now turn around and say don't. She almost that. invented the celebrity image in in some ways. She really did. <laughs> she, and she, she really did. Um, 
Yeah, and look, the other thing, I think she's a real hypocrite because I think, isn't she ageist herself? I mean, when was the last time she had a boyfriend over 30, for God's sake? Yeah. Um, Well, actually, funny you say that because I was thinking along the lines of truth or dare in bed with Madonna, which you've probably seen many times like me. I have. (laughs) I can't remember the exact example. Leave a comment, people, although you're very angry with me, I know. Um, (laughs) Leave a comment because she was definitely mocking uh, famous people for their age at the time. I think she was like, I don't want to look like Ethel Merman or something like that. I can't remember who. But she absolutely used to laugh at elderly or ugly. She she totally did. I've got a good example. Um, Yeah, yeah. Arsenio Hall's show. Um, back yes. in 1990 or 91, uh, she made fun of Joan Collins for being old. Um, and she sort of said, oh, have you seen her lately? Yeah. Um, I think they asked her about Warren Beatty because Warren and, and Joan back in the day were together. Yes. At this point. And they asked her about that. Are you, do you, um, what do you think about or do you feel threatened by Joan Collins? I'm not sure how this came up, but she said her retort was, have you seen her lately? And and sort of everyone laughed, you know. So she's totally um, has done it herself. Um, all of this is about hypocrisy to me. Yeah, Say yeah. Freedom of speech above all else. Say what the, whatever you want. Be as cruel and nasty as long as you're not breaking the law. Say whatever the hell you want. But don't don't then virtue signal at the same time, because it's just not okay. Exactly. exactly. And I want to bring us to one of my favourite women in the world, Oprah. Okay. I'll tell you what she's done lately. I'm not sure if you're aware. She, I'm not someone who even really notices, you know, people's weight and difference of it. In fact, someone I know really well could walk in with a radical new haircut. I wouldn't notice. It's just not my, I'm not programmed that way. But even I noticed that Oprah over the past year has been looking unbelievably good, like so beautiful at the premiere of the color purple and i've been going wow she looks incredible and she's been spruiking weight watchers she's got a huge contract with them right yeah then it comes out not through her own doing that she's actually popping one of those special celebrity pills uh or Zambi, right? something like that or yeah yeah and it causes this big furore around the world oh my god really she was saying it was weight watchers but actually she's on this pill yeah, yeah, yeah. What does she do? Here's a, this is another tipping point for me. It's made me cranky because it's very recent. Instead of coming out and going, look, I lied. Full stop. I told a fib. It's Weight Watchers in combination with this pill that I'm taking. Yeah, That's yeah. why I look so good. I'm really sorry if I misled you. She's just finished a one-hour special where she attributes all the blame. She, there's tears, lots of tears in this little one-hour special, <laughs> just like it's the same format as the old Oprah show. She's got a studio audience in there and she's on the stage with the mic and she blames the media, public perception. I'm, actually, have a little listen. Uh, again, keep in mind, I'm not saying what she's saying isn't reasonable. It is. But where's the sentence about I am also to blame in this? Making fun of my weight was national sport. And I'll never forget a day in 1990, I saw myself on the cover of TV Guide's best and worst dress list. And I remember thinking at first, oh look, there I am on the cover. And then I read the headline that Mr. Blackwell, the tastemaker of the time, called me bumpy, lumpy, and downright dumpy. I was ridiculed on every late night talk show for 25 years and tabloid covers for 25 years. Here are just a few of the thousands of headlines written about me. Oprah, fatter than ever. Oprah hits 246 pounds. Final showdown with Stedman sends her into feeding frenzy. Oprah warn, diet or die. Honestly, but this is just true. Damage control. You got caught out lying. Yeah. Instead of just doing the honorable thing, I told a fib I should have been more forthright. She invents a special. This is like back in the 90s, I reckon this would have worked, but we're too savvy as customers and consumers now. Yeah. The timing of this one hour special where she's tracking back over all the issues she's had with weight in her life, very reasonable and absolutely probably true, but there is nothing in that special about the fact that she misled the public. Yeah. And the thing is, she could actually help people by tell, telling the truth and saying, look, yeah. I, I am using Ozempic, um, rather than misleading people and saying, yeah, it's all through diet and exercise or whatever it is she's saying. Um, I haven't seen the, this special, but, um, 
I'm sure there's no mention of Ozempic or anything similar in there. And she's such an ethical, wonderful person. She's done a lot of great things, Oprah. So she I'm has. really, yeah. I'm so disappointed that she seems to have, you know, again, it's that whole, I'm a celebrity in this day and age, so therefore I have to claim victimhood somehow so that I am absolved of responsibility. Well, that, that word disappointed is key to me. And that's the thing. We, I think we need to stop looking up to celebrities as any kind of role model. They're just regular people like us in the sense that they have failings, they have, you know, moral gray zones, just like everyone else. They're not gods or goddesses. They're just people. And, um, I think we look up to them way too much. And that's why I think we, maybe we feel annoyed and angry because they, they kind of, um, they present themselves as these deities almost mm, mm. and yet they they you know when they're hypocritical when they're when they're um you know entitled it, it is disappointing sometimes amateurs know best and a lack of professionalism is all you'll hear on the time to talk show Join Tim and his panel of guests as they wade their way through a range of news, music, and pop culture treats. Time to talk. The show hosted by amateurs for unprofessional listeners. Amateurs, is this the best that they could do? Do you know who Kaylee Curio is? No, I don't. Okay. Kaylee Cook. I look, people are yelling at me. She's the, the, <laughs> the beautiful and talented star of the Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. I'd know her by sight, but I don't know her name. Exactly. Um, I used to call her Kelly or Katie, but it's <laughs> Kaylee Cuker. Anyway, this is a sort of a similar example. Another one of them that tipped me over the edge recently. She made an announcement, okay, an announcement, and she called it an announcement. <laughs> an announcement. Her beloved dog. Had died. Only today, I think. Kaylee Cuco is mourning a loss in her family. Oh, God. And then she announces the death of her dog. The actress shared the sad news on Wednesday, saying that she was in tears over the loss. As Kaylee explained, Blue's loss was even more upsetting because it was the third dog she had put down in the last year. Now, I'm not, I'm not mocking her at all. Dog in the the last death of a pet is, is horrible. But where... Where do celebrities draw the line around personal privacy and what the public need to join them in grief over, you know? If one of us had a pet that died, you, you share that with people you trust That's and right. it's a private moment, you know? And then the celebrities who always complain about their privacy being invaded, she's releasing a statement, an announcement, like a private yeah, announcement like about the death a, of a dog. A media release almost, like, yeah, yeah. You're right. I mean, where, where, where do you get off sort of wanting privacy when you invite the world into your, your private? I mean, that is a private thing. I'm really upset for a dang I really do. And, the, yeah. and by the way, I also respect her choice to share that with the public. But I'm, this podcast is all about our celebrities so deluded and out of touch. Like, come on, Kaylee, the world – didn't need that announcement. And certainly if you were going to share that, don't make it an announcement either. Like how important do you think you are? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine if you came to me and go, I have an announcement for you, Tim. My cat's just died. (laughs) Fuck off. Like wording it like that, there's something seriously wrong with you if you word it like that. Exactly. It really is. We've got a great uh, friend of the show, David, who has a few thoughts around this one. Okay, so really quick, on the subject of the topic you just sent me about Kelly Cuoco, today, because I get on my phone, you know, um, news sources, whether it's current events with world news or pop culture, sports, whatever, and was it today or yesterday, Chris Jenner's sister dying. I'm like, what? Okay, she's not a celebrity. Why is that popping up on my phone? There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, and that's popping up on my phone. So, yeah, it's stuff like that. And uh, I don't know. It, it, it's probably much different in Australia than it is in the US, but just had to tell you that. <laughs> well, it's not much different. That's the sad thing. No, it's not. We get the oh. same news, David. It, unfortunately for yeah, us, David. So unfortunately, I did the same. Uh, same thing happened to me. That did pop up on my phone, um, which is like uh, this lady I've never heard of 
just has died. That's news on my phone. Why? I mean, because someone, she's related to someone who's famous, who, who by the way, is famous for, for nothing, really. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it is, the world is crazy. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. Talking about Out of Touch, one of my favourites, I absolutely love this one. Do you remember, it was about maybe one or two years ago, Orlando Bloom married to Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he had an article in a magazine about how he starts his day. Did you hear about this one? Mm, I don't know. Because it's a little bit lengthy, but believe me, it's worth it. Okay. It's, it's, it's so bad that it's like this. Talk about out of touch. If you ever want evidence that celebrities have so much money and so many staff and so little responsibility that they're out of touch, here it is. He wrote, I wake up around 6.30. I have a smart ring sleep tracker and the first thing I do is look at the app to see if I've had a good sleep and I check my readiness for the day. Then I check on my daughter, who's usually up and cooing in her cot. My fiance, Perry, needs her sleep, so I try to leave her having a lie-in. Daisy's a very happy baby. I'll kiss her and we'll spend time connecting. I'll do eye gazing with her and sing songs. Daddy loves his Daisy dove so she knows who daddy is. My son's first word was mama, but Daisy said dada. It's amazing to be a father again. There's less anxiety in it this time and more presence. I'm a Capricorn, so I crave routine. Fortunately, my partner is really into that too. He continues, I chant for 20 minutes every day, religiously. I've had a Buddhist practice since I was 16, so that's infiltrated my whole being. I'll read a bit of Buddhism and then I'll type it and add it to my Instagram stories. Other than that, I won't look at my phone yet. I don't want to be sucked into the black hole of social media. I like to earn my breakfast, so I'll just have some green powders that I mix with brain octane oil, a collagen powder for my hair and nails, and some protein. It's all quite LA, really. Then I'll go for a hike and while I listen to some Nirvana or Stone Temple pilots. <laughs> <laughs> By 9am it's breakfast, which is usually porridge, a little hazelnut milk, cinnamon, vanilla paste, hazelnuts, goji berries, a vegan protein powder, and a cup of PG tips, whatever the hell that is. is. 90% plant-based, so I'll only eat a really good piece of red meat, maybe once a month. I sometimes look at a cow and think, (laughs) that's the most beautiful thing ever. At some point in time, we'll look back and not be able to believe what we used to eat meat. My son spends half his time with me and half with my ex-wife. If he's with us, I get him breakfast before school, then I'll have a shower and get dressed. I like to make an effort. No tracksuit bottoms. I have a deal with Amazon where I work on projects exclusively for them. I spend a lot of my time dreaming about roles for myself and others. I dream of roles for minorities and for women. I'm trying to be a voice for everybody. I've had this remarkable opening chapter to my career for which I was only semi-present. Without my Buddhist practice, I could have easily come off the rails. I've been changing the narrative in my head and feel that I can be the driver of my train. I can set it alight. I can get the fire crew and put it out. As a Brit and a parent living in America, through this election cycle, I was very challenged. Uh, Let's, we're almost there, I promise. (laughs) I started building Lego again. I dip in and out while I work. I build nice cars. And the methodical nature of creating this little thing makes me feel like I'm achieving something else. Then I'll do heavy weights for an hour, something oh my God. something to exhaust me. <laughs> we'll put the baby to bed, then it's dinner time. After that, I like to watch a movie or documentary for work. I aim to go to bed by 11. If I get eight hours sleep, I'm happy, so it's my sleep tracker. Time is so precious. I was always giving my time to other people before. Now I have the space to dream. Oh, my God. Sorry, mate. Make it stop. Make it stop. Has it stopped? <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, but what a self-obsessed little man. I mean, it's just I, 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 me, me, me. It's incredible. The the the, the level of detail of, about his own life, like going on and on and on about it. Well, I don't Can know. Imagine what you if you and I wrote one as the average Joe. It would be quite. A, it would be <laughs> so amusing, wouldn't it? You know, I got a I got a Cheerio stuck to the bottom of my foot as I walked into the kitchen. <laughs> had to clean up the hummus that had leaked out of the fridge. Didn't and have a again, maid to do that. Again, the hypocrisy in there. I mean, for example, he goes on about the cow being so beautiful, and one day <laughs> you know we'll look back on eating meat as, as you know can't believe we did it. But then he says he has a lovely piece of meat once a month. I mean, which is it? Like um, I know. And like you say, it's it's more the fact that he thinks 
that anyone would be so interested as to read that. We all have to, to detail to our to life, but detail. very few of us think, you know what, I think people will find this fascinating. People really want to hear this, that right down to the the, the ingredients of my smoothie, they're going to hang off every word. <laughs> my God. So I, a- I, I didn't have much of a – I didn't really think much about Orlando Bloom before. I didn't really have an opinion, but now, my God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Look, what shines through for me is I don't want to be too harsh because he's clearly it's a nice guy. He's clearly striving to do good, but it's just that mm-hmm. self-importance. That's what you said, and it's that's where it is. Like I, I not only want to do good by the world, but I need people to know that I'm I doing good by the world. Maybe I'm a bit more cynical than you. I think, is he striving to do good or is he striving to appear to be doing mm-hmm. good? Because mm-hmm. like someone who really does good, you don't usually know about it. They don't tell you about it. Um, but look, maybe I'm just in a cynical mood today. I don't know. Kaylee wants us to know that she's grieving right now. Oh, the whole world needs to know I'm grieving. Something upset me. Something real. But yeah. does the whole world need to know? And Orlando, do we need to know that you look at cows with love in your eyes? And then Uh-oh. eat them every now and then as well. And then eat them every now and then. Just a teat. Something they probably don't need. They can probably live with <laughs> the part without the part that he eats. Who knows? Wow. And then, of course, you know, my final example, very, very briefly, is Reese Reese Witherspoon. You've got to um, go and look at always a good one for this kind of thing. She was drunk, admittedly, but in her subconscious mind, when she's pulled over by the police, she literally says, don't you know who I oh, am? Do no. you know my name? The old Seriously. don't you know who I am. Oh, I can't believe it. I just couldn't believe it because I had so much love for her. I thought she was one of the few who was probably really did stay in touch. But no, yeah. she didn't. Do, do do you actually know who I am to a police officer? I mean, to actually use that, that um, I mean, that's such a cliche, isn't it? Wow. Um, now, she did, yeah, she did say later that she was drunk and she sort of profusely apologised. I mean, I She did know. the media management better than most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think wow. she went on Ellen from memory. That's right. Well, that's, and that's, look, she's another example, frankly, of, oh. you, know, you can't get a more entitled celebrity than Ellen <laughs> preaching love and, 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 you know, being such a wonderful person. And then she literally had the don't look me in the eye for her staff. Literally. Literally. The way she treated her staff. That's an old joke that we make as fans, like, oh, don't look at that diva in the eye. But we sort of think it probably isn't true. Isn't Ellen true, had it. It was true for her. And you know what? This is why I love Roseanne. Okay, Roseanne, absolutely, Peter, she was the worst on the set. Yeah. She literally didn't have names for her writers. She had numbers. She <laughs> literally had the rule, don't look me in the eye and don't address me uh, if you're not, you know, a core cast member, for example. She literally – but she's not a hypocrite. Yep. She laughs about it. She still says in podcast. <laughs> Someone <laughs> asked her recently about, like, is it true? Oh, no, actually, I asked her son on the podcast – recently is it true that your mum had all the writers i thought it was just an old wives tale that she um had all her um writers from one to 90 instead of names <laughs> and he just laughed and he go oh she loves that she's still if you say that to her now she'll just laugh <laughs> so good you're a bitch well, but you're not a hypocrite yeah, she's a bitch and she owns it good on her i mean so what she was literally like hey number seven you know or something that's great i, I have to listen to this i did see that pop up um on time to talk facebook and i haven't listened to it yet but i will after. yeah yeah He's a lovely guy actually you know because the, the theme of that podcast was his name is jake pentland and he's the son of roseanne and the theme for me and i told him up front was going to be you know what's it like to be the son of a, of a celebrity and clearly back then i must have been a little bit annoyed because the same theme was coming up for me where's the entitlement and does it flow on to children of celebrities could it even be worse because you've yeah, been brought yeah. up you know, been so spoiled. So that was the issue um, that I wanted to. Um, that's, that's really refreshing to hear that that um, that she's like that. I mean, so it's basic, basically, she's a she's a bitch, and she is proud of it. So I like that totally. And and Mariah Carey, I have respect for her too because she's yeah, a diva, she's and she 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 openly says, you know, she f- hires and fires and has tantrums. And okay, well, and and I can choose to like that or not. I happen to like it mainly because she doesn't then go around tutting everyone for not being nice. Yeah. There was that great quote where she also 
something about she, I, I don't know, something about she doesn't even know how to pay an electricity bill and she didn't <laughs> pretend that she knows this stuff or she does this stuff. So I like that about it too. That's it. And so when Megan and Harry get on a private jet, <laughs> they should just turn around and go, look, for security reasons or because we like the comfort and the luxury of it, yeah, we just- do fly private. Peter, I want to give you one last really quick example. Okay. I know that I'm, I'm clearly on a rant here, but it, it, <laughs> it's, a good one. it's a good one to end with, though. Justin Bieber, right? Oh, the Bieber. Um, not stuff. that he gets on his – he doesn't – to my recollection, doesn't get on his soapbox too much calling other people out. So maybe I can forgive him for this one. But get this. After arriving in Germany during his 2013 tour, Justin Bieber's pet – Monkey, Monkey, OG Mally, was seized by officials. Okay. Well, as you do when you're a celebrity, you've, you've got him in your lap probably. And how very Michael up. Jackson of him. Yeah, how very Michael Jackson. I wonder if it was related to Bubbles. <laughs> um, and this came as a result of a singer not being able to provide correct paperwork for Mally, the monkey. And even after being given a deadline to submit the paperwork, Bieber failed to do so. It was said that he no longer wanted Mally. So Mally was rehomed. People, including animal experts, were livid at Bieber for treating Mally like an accessory. Yeah, um, Michael Jackson got rid of Bubbles, but that was because he got um, he got violent, didn't he? Violent, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love to have been a fly on the wall and seen what what actually happened there. Yeah, it was. Well, apparently, once they become adolescents, they they absolutely do go off their heads. Like, <laughs> but well, I just like human adolescents can sometimes too. So, t- well, especially if you kept them in a cage and you know, yeah, exactly. I, I just you know, I only find that amusing because I wish somebody had filmed the moment that Michael realised that this <laughs> monkey had developed a behavioural disorder because um, he must have been outside. the <laughs> Hi, Bubbles. And then he yeah. sort of rip off his nose or something. Well, yeah, maybe that's what happened to his nose. Who knows? But <laughs> um, yeah, that was a sad story about Justin and, and Mally, wasn't it? And I think Mally ended up in a zoo or something. Yeah, he did. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not quick to judge on that one because there's probably another. If you had Justin here, he'd probably be able to say, look, maybe the behavioral well, thing was starting to settle in as well. I don't know. But yeah, certainly. Um, it was, you know, no it's, matter what way you look at it, it was entitlement even to have a monkey. It was. Place. And I remember people asking him, well, well, why did you get a monkey? And his response was, well, if you could get a monkey, wouldn't you get a monkey? <laughs> so, did uh, he really say that, <laughs> did he? <laughs> That's sort of out of touch. I have to admit, no, I wouldn't, even no, if I, I became I, super I famous overnight that. and rich. <laughs> Some of them go and buy giraffes and exotic animals from all over the world. And um, I think yeah. it was one of the dictators, um, might have been Gaddafi. He got an animal from every part of the world and wanted to invent this zoo. And oh. they all died because they were out of their habitat and didn't have access mm-hmm. to what they, what you they know. need. I wonder if there were any kangaroos or koalas in Libya. From <laughs> yeah, <here. laughs> probably, yes. He, I'm sure he would have had some exotic animals from Australia. Peter, have we done well to, you know, sort of call out some of the I think hypocrisy? We've done, well. we, we've done something good today. <laughs> Do we still love celebrities? We still love them, you know, especially my my old favourite Kylie. Um, no, no, look, it's celebrity culture is really interesting. It's it's always um, it's always something to talk about, but I think um, it's good to call it out sometimes. It is, and my message to celebrities: we love you, but just be real. If you want to be a cow if you want to be awful if you want to say horrible things we'll do it you're a human being and you've got all the money in the world and all the attention and the admiration just be a diva be a bitch or be a bastard i don't care um, do not be a hypocrite don't wave your finger at me telling me to recycle my coffee cup while you're sitting there with your tinted window private jet (laughs) flying over exactly flying over us no i i I think we've done well today